about had extremely racist views. Would you try to enlighten them? We're with people who are hoping that this social experiment will force someone they love to see just how prejudiced they're being on a daily basis. So let's see what the group had to say about our next scenario. Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at another clip and give me your reaction to what you see. By me, worked for the airlines for eight years, and even before that, I'm always conscious of someone um, looking, looking strange with a box. Someone as a Muslim? That's true. Do you presume that he is Muslim? Because I can tell you right now that it's a Sikh, not a Muslim. But I don't understand the difference. I think all of you are Arabic. All of you are Muslim. And that's a huge misconception. But either way, he has a box and he's looking around. I personally think he's carrying a box and he might be planting it somewhere. I agree with everything that's not loving everything. That's the first thing that pops in your head. I'm, I'm, I speak Arabic. I'm, I've been there. I was born there in Syria and for 19 years. I've been an Arab person. Honestly, I think if the police see anyone walking around like that, they should automatically stop them, question them. I'm sorry. Does your mother wear the headscarf? No. Okay. Well, I won't I'm sure. Because I will not go out there in public like that. Why? I tell my mom if you want to go outside with me, just dress normal. It hurts me. You. I mean, after September 11th, the things that I've gone through, I have been spit on. I've had. You know, moments where not even children. I'm talking about someone in his 30s pull my scarf off my head. I was there since I was three years old. I would just want to be American. If I had to fight a war, I'd fight an American one. You don't understand what it's like to wait for my sister to come home from school crying and, you know, blood on her face. This is not fair. I can't even explain what would go through your mind if I was to go up to someone black and be like, you're a Flat out, I'm appalled, I'm upset. My heart is racing because the only threat I see here at this table is pure ignorance. That's all I see. So, Rami, would you say you're embarrassed? Wow. I wouldn't say embarrassed. I would say honestly disgusted. That's what I would say. So right now, sitting in front of me, you're disgusted? After September 11, I'm completely disgusted by the actions of my people. Okay, joining me now is uh, Rami, who you saw on the tape, and his best friend, Natalie. So, Natalie, Rami was saying a lot of harsh things in that tape. But you've experienced it firsthand as his friend. Like, tell me, you guys, if you guys are, like, walking down the street and you see someone in, like, a Muslim garb, tell me what he does. Well, he'll pull me across the street, even if traffic is coming. The opposite side of the street. Yeah. And if I won't cross the street, he'll curse at them, call them terrorists, or curse at me. Really? And then tell me what happens on the train. If he sees someone in a turban, someone who appears to be Muslim, he will not get on the train. I will get on the train, and he will stay on the platform. And he will stay on the platform. Yeah. And Rami, what is your nationality? I'm Arabic. You're Arabic. So when I asked you that and you say that, what does that make you feel when you say, I'm Arabic? I'm, honestly, I'm still disgusted. Because mm -hmm. of everything that I hear from overseas that's going on, there's only beheadings, people taking, people taking hostages. Violence. There's nothing good coming out from my own mm -hmm. people overseas. So I can understand you being upset about specific things that are happening, but it seems that you have blanketed your entire people, all of your people, and, and have, have to, to the extreme. When did this start for you? This started after September 11th. After September 11th. So my would you say before you were Arabic and proud? Yes. And then after the towers were hit and, and destroyed and the people perished, this is when this happened? Yes, correct. OK. Um, so you, one thing you said is you said that your mother, you won't allow her to wear her, her veil anymore in, pu in public. What yes. does that make her feel like? Because she must be proud of her heritage and her religion and wants to represent that in public. She, she's proud of her heritage, but in the same sense, she wants to spend time with her son. And I refuse to go outside with her if she's like that. You refuse? You will not go outside with your mother not, if she has that not. on? Okay, and what about when your parents, do they speak Arabic? Yes, my parents speak to me in Arabic, and actually I answer them in English. You answer them in English. You refuse. What about dating? So when you date somebody, you know, you're starting to get to know somebody, mm -hmm. and a guy like you, you kind of, your race could be like a lot of different things. So I'm sure you get around to this, oh, what's your nationality? What do you say? I either say I'm either Spanish or Italian, because I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be rejected by the girl. You say that you're Spanish or Italian? Yeah. Then what about if you're falling in love with a girl and you want to introduce her to your parents? You, they, they, you, oh, that, they, that has never happened. So I never brought a girl home because I wouldn't want them to hear my parents speaking to me in Arabic or maybe them seeing Arabic food in my house. So I, and also, my, my ID, I, I, I never showed a girl my ID. They don't know my last name. 
Because I have like 10 letters in my last name. So what would you think, honestly, like of a female and they see something like that? You'd be appalled. You wouldn't want to speak to me. You think that girls would not want to speak to you yeah. if they knew that you had an Arabic last name? You ever heard of post-traumatic stress? Uh, you heard of that before? <laughs> you, ever, you know what that is? Do you know what that is? Not really. Okay, post-traumatic stress is what a lot of times somebody will go through after something terrible, terrible has happened. It could have happened to them personally. It could have been something that they witnessed. It could happen to like people that have been in wars, like veterans. It can happen to a, a mother who's, who's lost her baby. It could happen to somebody <coughs> that experienced a, 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 a national, awful, most disgusting thing, one of the most disgusting things that our nation has ever experienced. And you having a connection, uh, a, a, a historical heritage connection to some of the people that did it could make you have post-traumatic stress. And so it's a very painful experience and it's made you lash out on other people, but mostly Rami, on yourself. And one thing is you can't run away from you. You can call yourself Italian, you can call yourself Spanish, you can hide your ID, you can tell your mother to take off her veil, but you're still an Arabic guy, and a beautiful Arabic guy. That's not gonna go away. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. I want you, um, after this show, I want you to go home and I want you to Google, Google post-traumatic stress. Okay. And I bet you'll see a lot of the symptoms there that you went through after September 11th. Definitely. And I think that'll get you some healing and make you start loving yourself. Because I'm a black girl, I love myself. Okay?